Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about building your dream home, or any home here in Prince Edward Island, Canada, or anywhere else for that matter. So typically there would be three different routes you could go to decide what you're going to build. Number one would be just go online, pick a plan, or drop by some of the hardware stores that usually have oodles and oodles of books of cookie cutter type homes, which are awesome because they're very easy to sell at the end of the day because they haven't been too customized. So number one, find an internet site that has plans. You order the plan and then you hand it over to whoever's going to do the construction. Number two would be hire an architect. If I was going to build my super dream home on the water, I'd probably hire an architect like Sable ARC or many other qualified architects here on the island or abroad. Some people, if they're building a higher end home, will use architects in Toronto or New York or Boston, and that's always an option as well. Number three would be to buy a prefab home. The advantage of a prefab home, in theory, is they're built indoors and the quality is usually exceptionally good. And essentially all they need to do is transport the home to the site when it's complete. Prefab homes have come a long, long way recently. They are absolutely amazing. And many people are choosing this as a route because of the shortage of builders, which we'll get to next. So there's the prefab. Prefabs can be offered by Supreme Homes in Charlottetown. We've got Kent Homes, which is owned by Irving. There is a manufacturer that I can't remember the name of in Slemon Park, which is just west of Summerside. And then there's Maple Isle Homes in New Brunswick, which has a representative just east of Charlottetown. So check those out for prefabs. Now, as far as building the house, you could, if you were so inclined, become your own general contractor and hire all the trades yourself if you want to be that hands-on. Personally, I don't. Uh, second route would be to... Uh, hire a general contractor that would basically do everything right to the point of handing you the keys. The challenge in finding a buyer is probably two or threefold. Number one, we don't have any massive home builders here in PEI that can put up thousands of homes in a matter of a few weeks or months like Lennar in the States. Most of them are smaller uh, construction companies and they like to stick to their Pacific regions of the island because their workers do not want to travel for hours to build a house. So if you were building in St. Nicholas, it might be a different builder than North Rustico, Surrey, or Morrell, Charlottetown, or Summerside. So the builder is gonna come down to, number one, where are you building? Will they build in that location? Will their workers travel to that location? And then secondly, it would come down to their bookings. Now with COVID, uh, there, there has been a number of cancellations, but at the same time, the demand for new homes has gone through the roof because of the shortage of inventory. Or the inventory is so overpriced, why would you pay $9.75 for a house that you can build for four? So that's what's happening with the builders. As far as pitfalls, you really do have to do your research. I would suggest you check out what they've already built, talk to some existing clients. Uh, talk to people in the industry like real estate agents and brokers because they're going to tell you who is reputable and who is not. Thankfully, most builders are awesome. They do have specialties. We do have builders that are going to, you know, build nothing but super high end. Then we're going to have other builders that are going to build cookie cutter homes or average homes. So it depends on number one, where are you building? If you hire an architect, they'll tender it out and take care of that issue for you. Once I know, or once your agent or broker knows where you're building, they can probably supply you with a list of names that are reliable and put together a decent product. So that would be the pitfall. Additionally, uh, another resource might be the Prince Edward Island Home Builders Association, which some builders are a member of, not all. The challenge in PEI is that the qualifications to become a builder aren't that super high compared to other places in the country like BC and Ontario. So you do need to be careful that you're hiring someone that's going to put together a decent house. The job site's going to be clean and it's going to be done in a timely fashion. Typical house these days, from what I've seen, you're looking at six months. The builders, their bookings could be out a year or two, depending on what they're building. Since most of them are small contractors, they're not going to build 100 houses a year. They might build two, three, four, or five max. So you need to get yourself into that queue sooner than later. Now, rental apartments. The next question from this message from YouTube was, 
why is there a shortage of rental apartments? Well, it's the same reason there's a shortage of housing, period, because everybody from Southern Ontario and other places is moving to PEI. And that's also compounded by the fact that we have Holland College and University of Prince Edward Island, which are also looking for rental units. Why aren't private developers building apartments was the last question. In fact, they are. And they're building them with their own capital. And some of them are using the affordable uh, housing program through the, I believe it's through the federal government, which can be a bunch of hurdles. Uh, but they do supply with some incentives. So they're being built either with private funds or through the affordable housing plan. There's a large number of units going up. The challenge with building an apartments and the challenge of building a house is building materials have absolutely gone through the roof. From what I understand, in the last few months, they've gone down by 25%, but the days of building a house for hundred bucks or $125 a square foot have come and gone. That price has also been driven up by demand and lack of supply of builders. So a lot of them will not take the job unless they can make some money off it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So are units being built? Tons of rental units are being built relative to PEI's population, which some people say is going to be over 200,000 people in the near term. These apartments, because of the cost of materials, the rents are much, much higher than they would have been before. Because basically when you build an apartment, you look at what it's going to cost per door or per unit, and that's going to reflect the amount you're asking for rent. The other complications are if you build a new building, IRAC, Island Regulatory Appeals Commission, is going to tie into that equation. And you can't just set your rent at X and up at 10 to 50% per year at, on a whim because it has to be approved by IRAC. So that's another consideration landlords and apartment owners have is to make sure that they can set these rates or these rents so they can actually afford to run the building in the future. So that's it for today. If anyone has any questions about Prince Edward Island real estate, real estate in general, or PEI in general, put them in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching. Hit the subscribe button, the little bell beside the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. Have yourself a great day and be sure to join the mailing list at michaelshomes.com. Bye for now.